Hi everyone, welcome to Naughty Yarnies. I'm so glad you found me here. Welcome. Today I am chatting about crochet. So I started the last time by separating my knitting podcast with all my knitting works in one video and then having all my crochet stuff in another separate video. I end up doing so much crochet and so much knitting that my podcast ended up being almost two hours. Sometimes they ended up actually being three hours and I had to edit out a lot of stuff in the podcast. So I felt like it would be probably a better idea because some of my followers are knitters only and some are just crocheters. So now you can pick and choose or you can just watch one one day and one another day. Um, or if you get behind, you can just watch all the crochet or all the knit whatever you like to do, whatever floats your boat. And I'm glad you're here no matter what you choose to do. So today is October 1st. It's October, it's Halloween season, it's fall season, it's sweater weather, all the things. Isn't it nice? Like the nights are cool, the mornings are cool, and the daytimes are nice enough out for people right now in Ontario, anywhere where I am that people that are warm blooded can wear t-shirts or people that are cold like myself all the time can wear their sweaters with ease because it's nice and beautiful outside. I hope you're all well. I've had a pretty rough month since I've been at the wedding. Um, if you want to hear all of that, that's on my last video. Um, I plan to record my knit crochet one week my knitting the next week. So if you do both, you'll have a video every single week to watch. If not, it'll be bi-weekly with some other things sprinkled here and there throughout because I don't want to mix in any more. Sorry, my dog. Um, uh, so like Happy Mail, I did a separate video for Happy Mail. If you haven't seen that, I'd appreciate you going to look at it real quick, giving a thumbs up and checking out what I received. So Today's podcast number 36 and it's the crochet version because I'm going to have crochet or podcast number 36, the knit version as well. Um, I don't, because I never, I'm not sure. I don't want to start all over with one and go one, two with crochet, one, two with knit. Um, but it seemed, I don't know what to do. If you have any ideas, let me know down below. I'd appreciate it because Maybe you have a better idea than podcast number 36, episode one, or crochet version. Um, all right, so my first finished object. We'll jump right into it, guys. No, ch no more chitter chatter. That was enough. I only like to do a few minutes of chitter chatter. So my first finished object, I will picture myself in a photo shoot I did by myself here. I uh, took some photos when I was at my mom's out on her back porch. It was a beautiful sunny day and I went to visit her. So I took some things. So um, it was a whip last time you've seen it. I am testing for Kayla Osborne. This is called the Windows to the Soul design. I am doing the size extra large. Excuse me, I'm using Lion Brands ice cream scoops in the colorway of blue moon and a four millimeter hook is what I got gauge with and out of one of those gigantic balls of ice cream scoops yarn you know the big big giant balls it's a number three weight yarn this is all I have left this little nugget of yarn like enough probably to make a pom-pom a small pom-pom but a pom-pom and so here while well, you see the finished picture of me in it but here it is here. I love it. It's a little shorter than I normally would wear a sweater, but I wanted it just below my button on my jeans when I wear it with my jeans because this is a light material. I really like it. So the pattern has all different sleeve lengths. This is the uh, short sleeve length. Um, she's got one that's three quarters. She's got one that's long and then she's got one that's long sleeve with a bell Like a bell sleeve. It is gorgeous as well But I thought once I made it and tried it on 
I thought, no, I probably would wear it the short sleeve version more often. And worst case scenario, I find that I want longer sleeves, I will just go back and add the sleeves on anyway and put put them on at a later date. But I, I do like it like this. This is how I really like it. And the yarn feels super nice. The drape is lovely on it. It's I find it's very a very beautiful knit and now I've had a month worth of headaches and I was able to do all of this with with a headache so that goes to show you that her patterns are very very well written and easy to understand and very very fun so thank you Kayla for allowing me to test for you once again because I kind of failed at her other test the the film noir twist sweater that I was testing for her I believe is due or was due yesterday due today due by the end of the weekend and I really failed like I hate not coming in on time but the stitch that is in it it's nothing to do with her patterns because I'm obsessed with her patterns it's my wrist has been giving me some quite some trouble and it's not even my wrist that I hold my crochet hook in it's the opposite wrist. It's my left hand one. And it's not with knitting. It's not with crocheting. It's just with that one stitch that calls for that whole sweater. And it's a lot, a lot of crocheting. So I just, I'm not one to give up ever, ever. I never give up. I usually like I'm testing, was testing three things at once and I knew I can make the deadline for all three but I took three weeks break from it and I went back and I just did one row and by the end of the row I I couldn't do it anymore like I was sore to knit or crochet for the rest of the week again so I just couldn't do anything so I'm sorry Kayla but and this one is so amazing I just love this one I love the other one too I love the pattern I love the way it's written I love the way it looks that's exactly why I wanted to test it for her but I just, I can't, I can't risk the health of my risk, wrist for, for one sweater. I'm sorry, Kayla, I really, really am. And now that it is fall, y'all, we need pumpkins in our life. My son has, I'll put a picture in here, a display that over the last three years I've been crocheting him all kinds of items for decoration because he asked me to and as a mom I gotta provide you know like that's an honor when you're a knitter crocheter crafter of any sort and your child husband's wife mother sister brother niece anybody asks you to do something for them you are so honored that they even want your your products so of course we have to oblige so I had to make him a new one for his collection. So this one is one that I made the pattern myself. Um, I could kind of, I'm going to explain to you how I did it so you could make your own today. And if anybody's really interested, I can kind of do a more in-depth video if needed. Um, but I don't really think it would be needed. All I really did, I for this I used Bernat Softy Chunky, like um, the Bernat, Bernat Softy Chunky, and there's the label, there's the yarn, and the color is called Pumpkin, suit in the suit, um, rightly so. Um, it's a number six weight yarn and it's 100% acrylic and all I did okay so for this pattern I have it gave them already a small and a large this is the medium um, so basically what you're doing for the let me think here you can use a five weight or a six weight yarn and look at the label of your yarn and whatever it says on the label of your yarn, go down a hook size from that. Now this label called for using an eight millimeter hook, but I actually used a, what did I use? 
I used a 6.5 millimeter hook. So I went down like a millimeter and a half. You could, depending on how tight or loose that you crochet. So I started with magic ring and I put six single crochets into that magic ring. And I did all the increases. The regular way that you do a hat. So you do two in each round for the first, for the round two. Round three you do two and one and then you do one single crochet, then you do the increase, single crochet. The next round you do two single crochets, then you do the increase, two single crochet. And then the next round is two single crochets together, three single crochets, like separate. And then you keep going until you get kind of the size of the base that you want. And then you crochet the middle section, which is the section that will just be single crocheting around and around and around, right? Um, and you just keep going. And then when, uh, so for the small, I increased until I had six single crochets between the increases. And then I single crocheted seven, eight rows in the middle. And then I did my decreases until I had six left. Then I just darned my end through stuff while well, I stuffed it first and crocheted around with a needle and pulled tight. Then I went and got cinnamon sticks for the stem. You could also find some branches outside. There's lots right now. And I used some twine. You can also use thread, string, embroidery floss, ribbon, other yarns, whichever you like. Um, contrasting or to blend in whatever is your uh, floats your boat and then you tie it super tight so you do one wrap and then you pull it and you turn it around so you're doing it three times so the one time is here to here then I turn around you'll see it better on the bottom it's kind of like wrapping a big box gift you know how you used to go and do this way and then do that way and hard to explain but I'm sure there's videos out there but yeah so that's going to go in my son's collection for maybe I could get them if I see them in time and I don't have this edited up maybe I will get him to put, do a new photo if there's a new photo here and you see this one in there then he took a photo for me and I was in time so this is called Barb's pumpkin pattern and I'll I mean, if anybody wants to know, let me know and I could maybe do a quick little video or something and show you how it's done because it's super, super duper simple and super duper fun. Any colors you use for yarn, you could even use worsted weight yarn. Just make sure your hook corresponds with your um, yarn. Go down a size or two and increase until you have the, the amount you want in circumference do enough rounds like so the more larger the item the more single crochet rounds you're going to do so like um for the size medium i increased till i had eight between increases and then i did nine rows of single crochet in the main body and then i started my decreases for the size large i increased 10 to 10 so i did 10 single crochets and an increase 10 single crochets and an increase then i did 22 rounds of just straight single crocheting around before my decreases and then i started decreasing and then the large is like yay big the medium and then the small is the size that you had seen there of course that's the small with number six weight yarn now if I was to use a number five weight yarn it would be smaller so keep that in mind you might want to do a size large if you're using worsted weight yarn so it ends up to be a, a big enough size all right so that's enough about my pumpkin I think I believe yeah I chatted with you every all the information the next thing I did also for my son's display um, I'll show you the one I first did last because it's ended up being really large and I second guessed I'm like no that's too big for his display I wanted a smaller one so I ended up doing three and the first one that I did that was too large I'm keeping for myself I'm in love with it I, I love all three of them but I used Red Heart Stellar yarn and I have two different colorways of it so I used two complete balls 
for what I'm going to show you. And this is all the yarn I have left, is this little nugget here out of, and I got three owls. So it's owls that I'm doing, okay? So I got three big owls out of two balls of the Stellar yarn. I'll give you the information if you want it in a minute. Um, so here is the small one. I'll put a picture up here too. Here is the medium. Okay. And here is the large. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just love them. Like, look. They're just staggered. So you could see why. This is the large. So next to the pumpkin, look how big it is. So I thought, that's a little bit big. So I'm going to keep him for myself. So look at how beautiful the colors. Two big eyes, and he's got the beak, and he's got some tassels, and he's got his wings. So he's going to live right back here. I think he suits my decor pretty nice. I'm going to now let my son, so that was an entire ball of Stellar yarn, the whole ball, right down, I think I had maybe six inches left. I'm gonna let my son choose between these two because I think the colors are gonna stand out so beautifully with his all his pumpkins and his leaves and his acorns. So it's gonna give a little bit of variation for colors in his little scene. Like this one's probably six inches tall, and I would say this one's about 10 inches. They're the exact same, and it's my own pattern. I kind of just made it up as I went, sat there one night and going, I wanna crochet and invent something. So I did. Um, the only difference between, well, there's a lot of differences, but the different, two main differences um, I use the exact same hook for all three, so I use a seven millimeter. Um, the yarn calls for, I believe, an eight. Oh, no, the yarn calls for a ten. Nope, the yarn calls for a 6.5 millimeter, but I was happy with, um, with a seven. When I did a seven, it's pretty fluffy yarn, and I crochet pretty tight, so the seven was fine. You might want to go down to a six. Um... So I use the exact same hook. The only difference I did, besides doing less increases for this, I this was more increases than this, and then my large had more increases than the medium guy. Um, the eyes and the beak, so the black, the white, and the orange, all the accessories. Uh, the large and the medium sized owl, this one and the one I'm keeping, all were number six weight really chunky yarns and actually I used the uh, Bernat Softy Chunky for the beak on all 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 three but when I did the small um, I don't know if you know this but some yarns you can separate so you can separate the strands so I just separated the strands into two pieces so there was there's two there's four plies and I basically took apart two plies and used them for the beak for the small guy. And I did the same with the white. It was a really, really like a number seven weight white yarn that I used for this, six to seven. And I just split the yarn in half and used on this. I could have just used worsted as well, but I just had it around for these two guys. So decided I would use it and just make it into a smaller size one. So basically all I do is I do the same as with the pumpkin, crochet the base and increase until it's the size around I want, go up and to tell the, the height that I wanted. I did a little finessing for the ears, of course, because I've got the ears. And then I did a special little uh, bind off in here, did the all the accessories, sewed it all on before I closed it up. I sewed everything on so I could just knot the ends. I didn't have to sew anything on except, you know, here. I didn't have to darn in the ends. 
and stuff it, sew it, put the little tassels on it, and we're good to go. So that is my pattern for an owl. So if anybody is interested in this pattern, also let me know because I can I can do a video using that specific yarn, but what I was thinking of, if you have some of that homespun yarn, it looks just like this, the fuzzy stuff that not many people even use anymore. Um, it's been around for years. They still sell it. It's not discontinued or anything. It's soft, squishy yarn, but it has um, a gradient kind of effect, an ombre effect. It's beautiful yarn. Um, that would make lovely owls as well. So I would probably do the video using that yarn to show you how to make these guys. So if you're interested at all, let me know down below. Yeah, I'm kind of being real creative lately, everybody. So those, let me make sure I got everything to talk about with the owls. Oh, the colors I used, one was Infinity and one was Galaxy. I'm pretty sure this is the Galaxy color and then my big one was Infinity color. Not 100% positive on that though. And the balls of yarn are 90 yards and 113 grams. So comparison wise, if you have a yarn that you wanna look at the ball and see, so if it's 90 yards worth, to 113 grams the ratio you would get two owls out of one ball or one large one out of the one ball or if it's larger you can get two large ones so you never know all right so those are my owl patterns which are brand new oh for the eyes beak and everything I used the same size hook with the larger two but I used a five millimeter hook for the small little guy. And we will just add them to my little collection up here. So we will put this big guy here and we'll put this guy Just stick this little guy there and we have the pumpkin don't we so we'll put the pumpkin over here there we go so I put them all on my display so when I'm watching TV there I see all my beautiful stuff so those are all my FOs I only have one whip to show you today, and it is also a pattern that I'm designing myself, and I'm not gonna give too much, a, sorry about that, my dog hit the cord. I'm not wanting to give a whole lot of way about it because I literally just came up with this design this morning in my head, and I'm just starting it out. So what it is, is it's in my little handmade bag I got just from the secondhand store um, you know they don't give bags anymore so sometimes if I go in there and I'm not really there sh in the neighborhood to shop I don't carry bags with me so I go in and I buy a couple of things or like do you need a bag and they charge you two dollars for a bag or a dollar for a bag I'm like oh, I may as well just buy one off the shelf that I want and I could reuse for that dollar right so that's my thinking so I am designing a crochet hat pattern using fingering weight yarn I want to use it with to do with wool after I perfect the pattern itself so this sample I'm doing I'm doing premier yarn wool free lace that I got from Hirschner's it's a number one super fine weight yarn and it is color berry smash okay and it's a beautiful yarn the, um, this is a hundred grams 100 gram ball 88 percent acrylic seven percent pbt and five percent metallic it's sparkly 
machine washable and dryable. I love that part. It's made in Turkey. Um, and I'm seeing if there's any other information. 448 yards or 410 meters in 100 grams or 3.5 ounces. Um, I am using a 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. Yes, I put an elastic right there because it holds it in place for me so that I can crochet properly. So, because the thumb thing is not in the right spot for me. So it gives me a little lift for my thumb. Not sure if that makes any sense, but. So I just started and it's, the colors are working out really pretty. Or if you want to start, this is starting at the top. I'm just on the increase section right now, so it's nothing fantastic to look at. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to be done by next podcast. It takes a long time. Like this is only four, this is like the gauge swatch. So this is four inches from tip to tip. So that's how people, when they are going to work the pattern, when they get to this certain row, they need to be at four inches across or they're gonna to have to change your hook size. Um, yeah, so I'm testing this as I'm making the pattern, designing it, that kind of idea. So if anybody wants to test this eventually for me, let me know. I'm hoping to have this out not too, too long. I've got to think of a name. I got to think, I got to write it out. I got to actually finish the first time first. So it'll be quite a while. It'll be a couple months before I get this out and about. I have it away, written in a way that if you'll see these bobby pins on there, I have it in a way so the increases you do not have to count. Because it's fingering weight yarn, there's so many increases and you usually have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, you have to count between the increases. This one, you don't. You come across a stitch marker and you put two stitches in that one stitch marker and you move on. So, and you just replace the stitch marker. So it's gonna be super easy. I'm including tips and tricks on how to make it even easier as you go along. So this is so exciting for me because I've wanted to design this pattern. It's been in my head for so long and now it's coming to a vision. So I'm so super, super duper excited. Let me know down below if you're excited too to hear more about that and get the pattern out there. I'd love to know. So that was it for my whips. Um, just the one thing, um, I do have more than that for crochet whips, believe me. I still have my son's coal the mold to finish up. Um, I'm almost running out of that yarn, so I think I have to order some from Hirschner's. I have a shawl that I, I'm working on and my poncho design I have to finish up but because I'm designing that and it's more tedious with the headaches I can't work on that so it hasn't been touched at all so I'm not going to show that and then also the afghan that I showed you guys the two times ago maybe so that hasn't been worked on yet either but it one one weekend and I'll have that done no problem I'm not really worried about that one I want to talk to you about a couple of future things and then show you one thing that I picked up and that's it and that'll be all for the crochet section. Um, I mentioned about all the whips that are ongoing that I haven't touched. I will never show them when they're not touched unless somebody specifically asks to see them. So I want to crochet some socks to try and I've showed you, if you've been here a while, you probably say, well, I've seen that you had crocheted socks before started, where'd they go? They ended up being really, really large. So I ripped them out and I'm going to start again. So I'm using the pattern from um, Peyton's, oh, it's, I think it's from Yarnspirations. It's Peyton's Croy Socks, Toe Up Socks to Crochet. And you'll find that on Ravelry. Here's the photo of it. Yep, 
Yeah, so you could find that on Ravelry. It's a free pattern. I'm not sure if there's a video to accompany it from Mikey from the Crochet Crowd or not, but I I could read crochet patterns. I don't need the videos anymore, but sometimes it's nice to have the company to sit with them. So I'm going to be starting that eventually, not anytime, like really, really soon. Um, I just said um again, I'm sorry. So my husband and I went and we donated a bunch of stuff that has been accumulating outside in our garage. Um, since the lockdown and everything, we just kind of kept putting stuff in boxes that we wanted to donate to our local secondhand store. And so we decided it was a good day the other night. So we went there and I said, my husband said, would you like to go in real quick? I haven't been there in months. And I'm like, I would love to be able to. And I promise I won't take long. Usually, like I could spend hours in there, honestly, I could. I only wanted to check out the craft section. So if there was any yarns, if there's any material, if there was any knitting needles, crochet hook, that kind of thing. So that's all I did. That's all I checked out and left. So I went in and they have these things that look like a purse or a bag. And I thought that's what it was. It was, of course, rainbow colors and with peace signs. I thought that's perfect. Then when I opened it up, somebody had stitched this locally because they had about 20 of these designs. They were all the same, just different material. The top part holds crochet hooks. Okay. And then the bottom part has big pockets, like a really, really large pocket. And I said to my husband, well, that's silly. It doesn't really hold very much at all. So I was like, I'm not sure if I wanted to buy it because it was still $4, which was, is decent for, I mean, it's a steal for something handmade, but for the use of it, for just a few knitting or crochet hooks, I was like, I'm not sure about that. Then he gave me an idea. He told me to go on my sewing machine and just to mark out and then sew, stitch this side up too. So I would have crochet hooks that could sit there because anything that's in there is gonna just fall out anyway, right? So he says, yeah, just or match them up with the ones on top and you could have two rows of crochet hooks or put knitting needles down here or whatever you like. I said, oh, that's a great idea. So that's what I'm going to do with this. So you never know what you find. This is the only thing I picked up that day. So I usually could pick up quite a lot of different things there, but I just didn't. So I have that. Hey. Hey. No. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. Um... I'm not one for a lot of chatter and chit chat and all that good stuff. I just let you know what you got to know. And yeah, just, uh, I'm not sure which order I'm recording a bunch of videos today. It's October 1st and I'm not sure which order I'm going to release them because I'm going to release them slowly. So every couple of days or once a week, like the podcast will go out like one today or one in a couple of days. And then the other one will be a week later but I like to record when I'm feeling good. So uh, let me know down below, everybody, how you like the separation of the two. If you prefer it this way, or if you prefer me to just put the time in when to fast forward to the knit or the crochet section. I think this is working out pretty good, but I like to know everybody's opinions all the time. So until next time, everybody, I hope you're well. I hope you're having a wonderful fall or spring whichever end of the world you're on and I'm constantly constantly grateful thankful that you're all a part of my life um, and thank you for being my fiber friends always I truly truly appreciate it um, the bonuses are when I get to chat with you guys down below or in, on Instagram or other people's lives sometimes yes I plan to do lives but they will not be ever a probably a planned one because I never know how I'm feeling and I would like to just surprise people. So, and I don't want to step on people's toes because there's people out there that have timed when they have their, their lives. And just please know if you are a fellow podcaster 
and I go live during your time. It's nothing personal. I apologize. Every hour, every minute of every day, there's always somebody that's going to be live that I'm going to be stepping on their toes. So I apologize in advance if I do because there's really no avoiding it. There really isn't. So that's why I want to just do it sporadically here and there. And you can always replay. Watch the replay. You don't have to watch it when it's live either. So until next time, everybody, take care. Thank you for joining me. Love you all and happy crocheting or happy hooking. <laughs>